Mountain Gardens. It's about the uh, towards the end of June, and we're standing in this area. We just finished talking about the Rover Bell Flower. It's kind of a neglected area, and I just happened to notice this plant. This yellow. So this is called Dodder, uh, Cuscuta. I forget the species. There are a number of them. Uh, so this is actually a flowering plant. You can see it running along the ground here. Uh, there are, it's just starting to flower. These are going to be the flowers right here. Little white flowers and then it makes seeds. And the seeds fall and they germinate and they have just enough energy to get up three or four inches. And they sort of wave around and if they latch onto something, that's it. They sever their connection with the ground. They don't have any roots. They just totally feed off of whatever plants they're connected to. You can see how it behaves. So I've been trying to get rid of this plant for about 35 years. It's definitely less common than it used to be. It's just an annual, so if I can just keep it from going to seed, Eventually, I should be able to exhaust the seed bank that's in the soil. But it's tricky, you know, monitoring all this woodland to find this thing. Once it gets going, it's pretty obvious. It's like, if I leave this alone, it'll travel 20 or 30 feet. There'll be this yellow vine draped all over every plant, you know, in a huge area. You see it along the Blue Ridge Parkway sometimes where it's covered a whole area. It doesn't kill the plants, it just sort of weakens them. Uh, but it just, you know, if it goes to seed, then there's going to be a million of them next year, which I really don't want. However, it does have a medicinal use. So the Chinese species, Cuscuta, I don't know, Chinensis, uh, I think it grows a lot on soybeans, but the seed of this is a medicinal herb in Chinese medicine called Tusudza. It's a yang tonic, fairly important uh, herb. Whether or not our the seed of this one would be interchangeable. I don't think anyone really knows. I don't think there have been any studies in particular, and there's not really any history of uh, using this as a medicinal herb, the seeds of this in the West. Strictly a Chinese thing. But if you happen to see this, and it's usually in the kind of rich woods, I've never seen it out in the sun, rich woods, edge of woods, just draping over everything. Uh, if you see this and wonder what it is, that's what it is. And if it's in your garden and you want to get rid of it, then just make every effort to not let it go to seed. So I have a kind of resolve, personal resolution to never walk past this stuff. If I see it in the garden, I stop whatever else I'm doing, I stop going wherever else I'm going, and I pull up every single thing that it's attached to, and you have to look for a while because it starts running pretty fast. So it's gotten way over here, it's gotten under this. So you just try and pick every single bit of vegetation that it has glommed onto. And it probably dies almost immediately. As soon as this vegetation wilts, that'll be the end of it. Not gonna be a big problem with putting it in the compost or whatever because it has no storage organism. It has no chlorophyll. Like once it wilts, that's the end of it. Hopefully I've gotten it all, but we'll come back and no, see there's another little scrap of it there. This is the sort of thing it does and it usually gets on to uh, green leafy perennials, but occasionally it'll even latch on to woody twigs of different things. Now this is, so I really don't want to tear up my Angelica cutiloba, so I'm just going to try and peel it off of here with my fingernail. All right. 